Hi, my name's Cathy Miller, and this week we're looking at adding markings to the road. You know, all those yellow and white stripes that make it look real. So road markings are everywhere. Every road, apart from the very small minor ones, has them. Generally at junctions, if nowhere else. They're easy enough for you to go out and look at your own. But if you're modelling a historical area or a different location to where you live, then go out and look at those photos. If you're modern day, look at Google Street View. If you're modelling something historic, then look through and see if you can find some historic photos from the time. Don't forget that some railway lines will also have road markings, as will curbs. So road markings, where do you start? Well, there's a number of different methods. I'm going to show you an easy one. Now, it is very easy to do masking tape, and some people do do that very successfully. But I'm not going to do it for two reasons. One, this has got a bit of a key to it, and I'd be worried it would be easy to bleed under the masking tape or to pull off a lot of my dust that's on the surface here. Secondly, these cracks. Now, I've got a lot of these cracks, and they're quite deep, and there's no way I can mask those. And so any paint that I put on would just literally run along the crack and that wouldn't look very good. So instead I'm going to use a product you can buy very easily. And it's a Woodland Scenics road striping pen. Guess what you use it for? Now, for those of you who are going, oh, another bought product, you can buy a Tipex pen. There are loads of different pens that are white that would do as good a job. Um, it's harder to get a yellow pen. I'm not actually going to use the yellow pen today because I'm not going to put any yellow lines on here. But this is great if you are doing any roads that need yellow. And if you're doing more modern roads, you're more likely to have a yellow. Um, I'm doing a road that's based in the early 1950s. And I believe, having looked at photos, and I can't stress how much you need to look at photos of your era in your location, that all this road would have is white stripes down the middle. I don't think it would have anything else. The last thing that you might need is some kind of ruler. Now, this is a Woodland Scenics Flexi Edge ruler that comes and it's got loads of marks on n um, and you can see it's got these sort of um, um it's, it's got the distance so you can see how far across your road might be and then it's got these little stripes for you to follow and you can see how far apart the stripes are and you might want to use those those are a scale and um, you've got ho scale stripes and n scale stripes so the white is obviously the bit that you want to do. My only problem with this is it's not very, it's not very straight and I've never managed to get it to go very straight. So it's great if you're doing a curved road and you want to put a nice graceful curve into your layout, but for a straight road, it's not as straight as it could be. And no matter how much I try, it never goes as straight as I'd like. But what it does have that's very useful is um, the depth. And what it says is that they do these about four foot gap, seven foot stripe. So gives you an idea of how much the stripes are gonna be. So what do I use? Well, a ruler like this on its own, if you put it down and run the ink along, it'll just run under and, and smudge. So you can get them with beveled edges and that's what I'd quite frequently use. Or you can just put something underneath to sit it a little bit brush, proud. So the before I get going, I'm just going to do it like that so that it's proud and then it won't, won't run. So before I get going, I need to just mark my centre lines. Now, instructions say shake for one minute. And you literally just draw along like this. It's as simple as that. I often do the two starts because I sometimes think they need a couple of goings over just to get the, the depth that you want. If you were doing a more modern road, you'd need a lot more markings on there. These parking bays would have markings. Sometimes, certainly in the UK, some roads will have edges of the road marked. Um, some of them, there may be um, all sorts of restrictions and intersections and all sorts of signs. Now, my intersection is actually about here on my layout, so that will be coming on the next piece. But in the meanwhile, this is just a straight road. Whether you're going to do it with a solid line or not, it's very much the same technique. Okay, so what do I do next with the road markings? Well, I'm just going to give them a bit of a scrub. They're generally quite um, solid, and that's fine. What I need is just to knock them back a bit. And there's a number of ways you can do that. Um, on the foam, there's not actually that much you can do without it being um, 
sort of damaging the surface. So I just tend to go with a sponge and just try and make them less shiny, if anything. There we go. I mean, you can do something with a, just a, where is it, a file or something, if you want to just scuff them a little, just to take some of the paint off. Especially around the cracks areas. And of course, where they go over cracks, there we go. You may want to just go over the crack again, just to show that it's gone through the, um, So this is just an emery board. So if your road's relatively new, you don't need to do this, but I just find it, it knocks them back a bit because they can be a bit stark and white on an older road. So you do need to think, if you look at a lot of those photos of your era, do the white lines look fresh? Is this a new road? Have you put loads of patching in? If you've got loads of cracks and patching like me, your white lines aren't going to be pristine. So there we go. So that's it for marking, ridiculously easy. And they do do a remover pen in case you get it wrong. So if you don't like something and you go, actually, not a fan of that, you can just put this on and it will remove it. Now, I'm a little bit wary of that on here. I'm gonna mop it up because this is foam and I have had problems with the foam distorting when you put um, basically anything that's not acrylic. So you put in a solvent-based substance. So I wouldn't try it too much, but it could be a useful technique if you've done a different um, sort of road surface like plaster to try and pull off some of your markings if you want to make them look a bit older. Well, here's the final result. The markings down the middle. Not exactly earth shattering putting on line markings, but really important. And I can't stress the need to go and research pictures from your era and your location to see what colour and what distance and spacing they look like. This week, it looks like Enscale Kathy's finally got behind the wheel of her car. actually learn to drive. Check in next week when we come live from the steering wheel. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. Tune in next week where we're doing a little bit of scrap ground. So if you're enjoying it, then subscribe to me on YouTube. Alternatively, like me on Facebook, Kathy Millett Modelling, or on my website, kathymillett.co.uk. See you next week.